Joining us now with more insight on the Syria crisis and what appears to be a political gamble that U.S. President Barack Obama is taking is Peter Bechtold, a political science professor at Portland State University. Peter, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. There appears to be a lot of skepticism over what the president is saying, not just internationally, but here in the United States as well. And looking at the way the administration is going about trying to sell this, it's beginning to look more and more like the case George Bush and company tried to make and going to war against Iraq, doesn't it? It does, most unfortunately, yes. So what do you make of uh, this? I, yeah. Go ahead. Well, well I, I, was, <clears throat> I was very much surprised by the two speeches that Secretary Kerry gave. I've had tremendous appreciation for his efforts as uh, chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And he was always known to be very moderate, very low key, in fact, it was said that his low-key approach um, uh, may have cost him the election in 2004 against President Bush. Uh, yet those two speeches that he has given have been the most emotional speeches I have ever heard from him. And one sort of wonders why, what is really going on here? He's obviously being uh, assigned the task of, uh, of giving that speech uh, so the president wouldn't have to give it. Right, and the irony of this seems to be that we have John Kerry, who was an anti-war demonstrator during the Vietnam War, and President Obama, who voted against the war in Iraq, now clamoring for this war in, uh, in Syria. Um, the administration has obviously gone on a marketing and PR drive, if we could call it that here, yeah, and a charm offensive correct, correct. In, in Congress as well. Um, no, it's really trying to change uh, the members of Congress, uh, change their minds. Do you think they will succeed? Well, it's very hard to say. Uh, I think if the vote were held today, uh, they would not succeed uh, because the American people overwhelmingly are opposed to any military action in the Middle East. And uh, perhaps that is the reason why the language that has been used by the administration has been so strong. Uh, Anand, if I may, um, you know, there is a huge divide in the United States between what the mainstream media have been putting out and what the academic community has been discussing. I spend about four to five hours every single day on this issue, listening to national public radio, watching six different television networks, international and American, but mostly reading the blogs of Syria and Middle East experts. And the Middle East experts are completely opposed to any military strike because it can only set back the United States. It cannot possibly advance our interests. You know, there are two things that appear to be missing from this. One is we keep hearing that the administration has uh, intelligence that tells them that Bashar al-Assad was responsible for this attack. We see, uh, we don't see the uh, evidence, but we hear about the intelligence. The other thing is that President Obama has not articulated exactly what he wants to achieve with this strike here. Yeah, on your first point, Anand, uh, both are very excellent uh, questions. On your first one, um, uh, there clearly uh, have, crimes have been committed. Chemical weapons or, or mixtures of chemical and other weapons have been used, but it is not clear by whom. Uh, I've seen today against reports from what seem to be reliable sources that indicate it was not the government. And if you listen very closely to Secretary Kerry, who in an earlier life, of course, was a lawyer, uh, he uses a passive voice. You know, crimes were committed chemical weapons were used, but they don't really say by whom. It is all by uh, inference. And uh, there are more and more reports coming out that the intelligence comes from another country, which is a neighbor to Syria. And, um, you know, uh, to be very blunt about it, it's Israel's unit 8200, 8, which has intercepted communications. And some believe uh, they have planted these stories. And what it is really about, and academics have been talking about this for more than a year, it is really a proxy war against Iran uh, because Iran has been on a target list of both the United States and Israel, and for that matter, uh, uh, to some degree, Saudi Arabia. And so by going after the government in Syria, it would deprive of Iran of an asset on the Mediterranean. I think that is the real reason why we hear the kind of comments we hear. 
And what the American uh, Congress makes of this is hard to tell, mm -hmm. because members of Congress uh, are, uh, you know, unfortunately infamous for not studying world affairs, not right. knowing countries where they are, and so on. Okay, Peter Bechtel, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us, sir.